In the early 20th century, segregation and racism were the most prevalent issues facing the African American community. Jim Crow laws were passed in an effort to separate blacks and whites in America. Thus, in 1905, an organization called the Niagara Movement emerged to fight segregation and gain social, economic, and political equality for African Americans. The Niagara Movement triumphantly fought against racism and segregation. However, disagreements among its leaders and a lack of funding led to its tragic dissolution. Triumphantly, its ideals were preserved through the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. The foundation of the Niagara Movement was a response to widespread segregation during the 20th century. W.E.B. Du Bois, a Harvard graduate and professor at Atlanta University, directly opposed segregation and wanted African Americans to be given the same privileges as white Americans. He wanted to fight segregation and began to search for people who would join him in his fight. William Monroe Trotter editor of the Boston Guardian, was a man with similar beliefs to Du Bois. Trotter hated segregation and wanted suffrage and social rights for all African Americans. Trotter and Du Bois connected over their similar ideologies and became the main leaders and organizers of the Niagara Movement. Du Bois sent letters to 59 friends and colleagues to establish the movement and find founding members. However, the main principles of the group were stated in the Niagara Movement's founding document. The Declaration of Principles. In July of 1905, Du Bois met with a few early members of the movement in Buffalo, New York to write the Declaration of Principles. The document began with Du Bois mentioning the significant progress that had been made at the time in securing African American rights. However, the Niagara movement wanted to continue to fight for their freedoms. At the same time, we believe that this class of American citizens should protest emphatically and continually against the curtailment of their political rights. The Declaration of Principles established the causes that the Niagara Movement would fight for, including education, suffrage, and economic opportunity for African Americans. Finally, the document stated that there were certain duties, including treating every person equally, that the Niagara Movement and the people of America should uphold. Of the 59 men who received letters from Du Bois inviting them to join the Niagara Movement, 29 of them came to the first meeting in 1905. Although the meeting was supposed to be held in Buffalo, the location was later moved to Niagara Falls, Canada due to lodging complications. It was this move that inspired the name of the movement. Similar to Niagara Falls, the Niagara Movement hoped to be a strong current of change for African Americans. The Niagara Movement began its triumphant campaign against Jim Crow and segregation by finding more activists to join the movement. Approximately one-third of the original members of the movement had affiliations with newspapers and used this fact to their advantage. One prominent member, Jesse Max Barber, was able to publish many of the speeches given by W.E.B. Du Bois in his newspaper, The Voice of the Negro. This tactic of utilizing the press to gain followers worked, with the group size increasing from 29 members in 1905 to 170 members in 1906. The Niagara Movement also took direct action against segregation and racism in the United States. For example, the group supported many court cases fighting against segregation in train cars. Barbara Pope, a member of the Niagara Movement, was arrested for sitting in a whites-only train car, and with the help of the Niagara Movement, was able to win her court case. The group also protested against national instances of racism, such as the Atlanta Riot of 1906, a large massacre of African Americans. Another action taken by the Niagara Movement was to encourage college students to fight segregation and join the Junior Niagara Movement. This sub-organization of the Niagara Movement was composed only of college students and hoped to be more persistent in fighting Jim Crow. The Niagara Movement continued to meet annually after their first meeting in 1905. In June of 1906, the movement met in Harpers Ferry, Virginia, the site of John Brown's raid 47 years earlier. Several of the members gave important speeches, with Du Bois giving the final address. We want full manhood suffrage, and we want it now, henceforth, and forever. The group met again in 1907 in Boston and in 1908 at Oberlin College in Ohio. And with each of these annual meetings, the group was growing in number. The Niagara Movement hoped to continue to grow and fight segregation, but unfortunately, the group experienced a tragic decline in productivity after their meeting in 1908, which eventually led to the organization's downfall. One of the factors that chipped away at the Niagara Movement's foundation was the Tuskegee Institute, 
led by Booker T. Washington, an influential African-American figure at the time. Washington promoted blacks embrace segregation for the time being and focused on raising themselves up through hard work and economic prosperity. As both Du Bois and Trotter displayed disapproval towards Washington, a sense of hatred formed between both parties. Washington decided to undermine the Niagara Movement in order to further his views for African American advancement at the time. Booker T. Washington began by sending undercover spies to meetings held by the Niagara Movement. This was possible due to Washington's exemplary reputation and large following of both blacks and whites. Another tactic that Washington utilized was isolating the Niagara Movement from the black press. The Niagara Movement relied heavily on circulating announcements for upcoming meetings through black newspapers and the isolation tactic used by Washington proved critical to the downfall of the movement. The aggressive attacks by Washington slowly caused distress among Niagara Movement members, leading to a foul relationship between the two main leaders of the group. In addition to the external harassment that the group experienced from the Tuskegee Institute, leaders of the movement William Monroe Trotter and W.E.B. Du Bois had differing views on the inclusion of women to the group. Du Bois called for the addition of women while Trotter strongly opposed the proposal. Du Bois stated that the movement began to suffer internal strain from the dynamic personality of Trotter and my inexperience with organizations. This conflict caused the partnership between the two leaders to tragically collapse and Trotter withdrew from the organization in 1908 and went on to pursue his own new organization called the Negro American Political League. The final rationale for the downfall of the Niagara Movement was the financial strain felt by the group. The lack of funds proved to be detrimental as they were not able to finance group meetings as well as larger public meetings. The group had trouble collecting dues from members and did not intend to accept donations from sympathetic whites as they wanted to be a solely African American organization. With the group in turmoil and the lack of organization present among the group's leaders, the Niagara Movement disbanded in 1910. Despite the tragedies experienced by the Niagara Movement, the group left a legacy which triumphantly led to the formation of a larger organization, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or NAACP. Four years after being part of the Niagara Movement, Du Bois and other Niagara Movement members joined the NAACP. Not only did the ideals of the Niagara Movement lay the stepping stones for the NAACP, but its members also became the NAACP's first supporters and earliest leaders. Within the NAACP, Du Bois acquired the position of Director of Publicity and Research. He also became the editor of the organization's official magazine, The Crisis, a record of the darker races. With a larger budget and more mainstream support, the NAACP was able to accomplish many significant achievements pertaining to civil rights. The crisis was able to reach thousands of people across the country and inform them of the daily atrocities committed against African Americans. Also, the NAACP was able to accomplish significant legal reforms, such as fighting against the infamous Grandfather Clause. The NAACP was able to tackle local and national instances of racism like the Niagara Movement never had before. However, it was the Niagara Movement's direct denunciation of segregation that inspired much of the triumphant work that the NAACP would accomplish. The Niagara Movement experienced many triumphs and tragedies during its existence. However, the group is not always recognized for its contributions to the Civil Rights Movement. Popular discourse suggests that the movement started in the 1950s and is remembered fondly for its boycotts, sit-ins at lunch counters, freedom riders, and crucially, for its most charismatic leadership. However, as scholars have noted, the civil rights movement has a much longer history than is commonly noted. And as a result, we are still continuing to learn more about civil rights activity prior to what historian Pinel Joseph has called its heroic phase. Thus, the Niagara movement should be further recognized for its accomplishments. <laughs>